Maybe you don't want your NPCs to wander anywhere they want. Let's figure out how to keep them in a specified area. As you can see in this example, this guy stays in this area. This guy over here in the green area, and these two stay here. You can see that the areas can even overlap without messing with where they can travel. If you find this or any of my videos helpful, like, subscribe, and leave a comment about what you want to see next, or if you have any questions. Let's do some quick setup. I'll start with the clean level area and make a new blueprint for setting the areas that I want them to stay in. In this blueprint, we only need a box. The box collision works well here, and I set it to the root. I turned off hidden in game to make things clearer for this example. Next, I quickly make an NPC character blueprint and set the skeletal mesh to your preferred mesh. I chose Quinn. I moved the mesh into position and set the correct animation blueprint. I checked Use Acceleration for Paths so the mesh walks and not slides. I create a blueprint for the AI controller and another for the behavior tree. We don't need a blackboard in this example. Since I plan to move and then wait, a sequence node is a good fit here. In the AI controller, all we have to do is tell it to run the behavior tree that we made when it starts. I went ahead and made a behavior tree task named Patrol to Random Point and Set Area. Now that most of the blueprint classes are made, we can jump back to the NPC blueprint and assign the AI controller we made. I added a variable to to the NPC to reference the selected area in the level. Set the type to the blueprint you made earlier, and remember to click the eye to make it editable in the level. In the behavior tree, I added my new task and a wait task node, and lower the wait time to three seconds. The bulk of the work will be handled in the task we made. Open the new task, and in the event graph, add the event receive execute AI node to start running as soon as the behavior tree calls the task. The get random location and navigable radius node will pick a point it can walk to within range, but isn't limited to a desired area. By casting to the NPC class, we can access the variable we added, and then get to the box that I named area. The node get scaled extent takes into account the brush settings and the actor's scale to calculate how big the box is. I only need the X and Y axis, so I split the output pin. If the area isn't square, we will need to know if the X axis or the Y axis is further using the max node and set the larger to the radius pin of the random location node. I want the origin of the random point to be in the middle of the allowed area, which we can get from the get actor location node. To know if the random point is in the area, I'm going to spawn a trigger. Any shape should work, so I chose a sphere. Split the transform pin so we can set each property individually. The rotation doesn't matter, so we leave it and use the random location as the trigger spawn location. Using the is overlapping actor node, we can see if the trigger is touching the allowed area. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life. We don't want to just leave a bunch of triggers sitting in memory, so we will destroy them after we check for overlap. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget if it isn't overlapping, we will just go straight to fail. If it is overlapping, we want to move there. The AI move to node will handle that. Everything will end up alright. Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like, and find your limits, don't be rigid. Always remember to add the successful and failed finish execute nodes so the task can report it's done. Time to start putting it together in the level. Start with adding the nav mesh bounds volume to mark the whole area that the NPC can walk. I covered the complete floor. Next, add some allowed areas and some NPCs. Select an NPC and find the variable property that we added. Set that to an area of your choice. I like using the eyedropper, but the drop down is easy if you've named them well. Time I make a 
make some progress. I could see that they compare. Here's where I remembered I forgot to hook up the pawn pin. Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming and they're scared. I walk a straight path. Not many can say that. I'd like to play fast. Cross me and there's payback. You better pray that. Now when you play, you will see that the NPCs run around, but stay in their areas. I'll add some debugging so you can see more. In the patrol task, I'll add a sphere wherever the random point is. Actually, I'll spawn a red sphere outside the area and green inside where it can move to. They'll try to kick you while you're down. They want to rise up while you drown. They want to fill your head with doubt. They're silently scared that you'll figure it out. Now you can see that the NPCs can pick a point, and if it's outside the area, the task fails, skips the wait node, and tries again. Because these areas are close to square, there won't be many tries outside of the area. There will be more if the area is long and skinny, so it would be better to set patrol points for those NPCs. This system is good for, say, keeping farmers around the farm and lumberjacks in the woods, or to keep an NPC inside of a house. With minor changes to the task blueprint, you could set an array of areas that are allowed and use this system to keep NPCs out of houses they shouldn't be in, or for NPCs with multiple roles that need to go more places. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment about what you want to see next or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.